Okay, a couple of random thoughts on not intraday trading ETFs based on intraday range. And we could certainly talk a lot more about this in future shows. And I know here's the thing, you know, it's probably 90% of the people's eyes going to glaze over. And there's 10% of people that are probably chomping at the bit to get um, at all this. Or is it champing at the bit? I think that was a line of billionaires. Skull, NRBs, skull days, okay, NRBs, narrow range. In RBs appear to be in hindsight, and this is what I was saying a second ago. Yet, you know, intraday if they are still below 50% of average, so at least that helps. And I never realized how important this percent of range was when I put it in think or swim, God knows how long ago, probably a year ago or more. And then when I changed computers, I lost it and downloaded the new software and got all set up and Maybe it was still there, I didn't know it, but I just got it set up again this week, a couple of days ago. I have to say, it's keeping me out of a lot of bad trades so far. So I'm pretty excited about that. So anyway, the point I just made was, even though they appear to be completely in hindsight, the ones that are skulls stayed below 50% the whole day. So just by not trading until it's at least 50%, or it looks like it's gonna break through that 50%, or if you had one or two fake outs, okay? So this is not a be all end all tool, but it's a tool I think that could lead to something much bigger. Now the downside is that you potentially give up the amount of minimum range you require. So it's like, okay, I need this much range before I go in and it only goes that much, okay? So that that is a bit of a danger. And you could always, you could as always, I should say, end up buying the exact high tick, the exact high, thinking that the range would will continue to expand. I bought the exact high tick a couple times last week, okay? So don't rush out and, and try this stuff at home until you begin to wrap your head around it. And that is one of the downsides of waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. As opposed to maybe if you were a little bit more aggressive and didn't wait for all this confirmation, you might have gotten in and got a little piece out and scratch out on, on the remainder or whatever, as opposed to possibly buying the high tick. Reason I'm telling you this is I don't wanna, you could see, you could hear my excitement, at least I hope you can, about this stuff, but you gotta realize that you could still, there's a downside to this type of thing too. There's always a downside to whatever you do, believe it or not, or in trading, I don't think that's hard to believe. Anyway, that's why I brought that up. So a couple of things more on not putting capital into harm's way. And again, this is just one little tool I think we could use to help us stay out of these choppy markets or when the market is choppy. So be leery of the first 15 minute bar fake outs. That doesn't mean that you'd never want to trade on the first 15 minute bar. As I say ad nauseum, sometimes that might be the big move, the biggest move or the whole move of the day as in that first 15 minutes, but sit on your hands a little bit, maybe look at that 50% that indicator, and if you're down around 27% or 23%, and it looks this big on a 15 minute chart, but it looks about that big, when you look at a daily chart, so look at that daily chart too, it might keep you from getting in on that first or second or third fake out. So again, watch your daily charts, and then I don't know about you, but there's been many a times where I've made some intraday trades, and at the end of the day, I look in the ranges about that big, and I'm like, I'm such an idiot. Why did I? Why did I even bother trading? Why was I? Because I was trying to generate some income, you know. It's like as opposed to, hey, you know what? We're not going to generate any income today, but we're not going to lose any either, you know. In order to make money. It's important not to lose too much money. You're gonna to have to lose some money to make money, but when you don't have to lose money, don't lose money. <laughs> write that down. Whenever I speak to a foreign audience and I go write that down, it's like they all write it down. Like it's like <laughs> anyway, again, watch your daily charts, time travel. Like, how are you gonna feel at the end of the day if you got this little tiny inside day and you bought that ETF, right? And you lost money on it. You're like, I'm an idiot, right? 
why did I do that? So it's, and that's trading in general, that's life in general, by the way. If you decide you wanna snap back at your wife, if there was a way to just stop for a second, and there's a neurology there too, as I've said before, you know, bypass that little amygdala and get to the rest of what's sloshing around up there. If there was a way you could like slow things down and go, how is future Dave gonna feel if he smarts off to his wife? It's like, oh, it's such a good, such a good little quip. Oh, oh. <laughs> anyway, how are you gonna feel at the end of the day if you get caught up in a choppy market? Well, you're gonna be you're gonna be pissed off because it happens and there's no way to completely avoid it. But maybe some of the research that I'm working on, and by the way, with something like TKOs and bow ties and all this other stuff, I've done it for so long, I have a really good feel, and then I know some of you guys could actually quantify it. In fact, years ago, I, there was a guy, and I actually know his name, I don't wanna say it, and I'm, I'm not, I think he's still involved in markets, but he was, he was doing some sort of, it wasn't a neural network, but it was a a learning machine to where like if things didn't work, the machine would learn whether or not they didn't work because it just was by chance, or was there was there a flaw in the methodology, or whatever? And it made me kind of nervous because I think he was getting kind of close to completely kind of mechanizing what I do, which which I think could could take the edge out if if it worked. It actually made me nervous because he was such a smart guy, or still is actually, and that I I think he was on to something there. And I was hopefully he's moved on to somebody else's methodology and, and taking the edge out of there. <laughs> anyway, that's a that's a two bit story, I suppose. Keep on you know, here's the other thing too, keep an eye on the market action. And let's say the market's going straight up and you're really liking an inverse ETF and that range is starting to expand. Yeah, it could be the mother of all moves that are negatively correlated to the market, but in general, things will stay correlated to the market. So you got to really, 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 really like a setup to swim against the tide. And that goes for longer term trading too if you think you have the mother of all shorts and the market's going straight up then take it but think really hard about taking it okay because you don't want to fight the the tide now here's one thing i've been guilty of before and the problem is i get rewarded enough on it to where i get a little cocky and like sometimes you'll get a wide range bar tail down and the market will exhaust itself and then it'll come straight back up and you can make a lot of money going one way, then turn around and make a lot of money going the other. Unfortunately, sometimes it does not materialize like that, obviously. And Steve Ladd, and that's going to be a, a that's a term that I use with one of my clients, and he'll probably catch on. But Steve Ladd ran his motorcycle through the tunnel of fire, and he got through the other side, and he was just so excited. He ran his motorcycle back through the tunnel of fire, and he didn't come out the other end. <laughs> you know? So it's kind of like you go way, way, way in the market, you're like, that was fun. That was great. I'm awesome. And then it's like you turn around and like go the other way. And sometimes you're you're not that good to where you can catch both sides. So it's that's a tricky thing to do. And that's where you got to be careful. Let's say you make a thousand dollars going one way in ETF. Just be if you do trade the other way in the inverse ETF, whatever the case may be, but if in the other ETF that goes the other way. Just maybe trade at a smaller size just in case. So make sure you lock in the line shares for the day. Now, just for fun, at a minimum of a 75% range, would there be enough days left to trade and enough range left in the day? So there's two questions in that sentence. And I was pretty amazed at how many days and maybe David W in here might could give me a, a mathematical explanation. But I was pretty amazed. If you bump that up to 75%, look at how many how many days you would eliminate. And would these few remaining days, like this one here for sure, right? Have enough range left in them to 
make money. So that's that's a little fodder for research to leave you with. But if you wait for the intraday range to expand beyond 50% ATR, haven't you missed the move? Um, well, 50% 50 50 might be might be too big of a number. Okay, this is just this is kind of like new research. I'm kind of bring it to light it it all depends but i don't i don't think that you would and i'll tell you this for a fact what i've seen is waiting for like 23% or you know it's like what whatever mark was at 23% or 30% or whatever it seems like that's that's not enough move to 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 get in anyway but yeah you bring up an interesting point and you know, if you want to fire up your programming, um, and if there's anything you want to share with us, that'd be great. But how many times when it's less than 50% does it not? I mean, you go back in and look at all those days that I just showed you where it was less than 50%. Well, you you would avoid it all those days of getting chewed up. And then it seems like on the big days, it just seems like it's so much, it's so much bigger. And I don't know if you're able to see this or not. Oh, here's a good example here. But you can see like on this day here, I don't know if it's gonna come up on the camera. You got a little tiny bar there, right? Compared to these big old fat bars where you'd have made a lot of money. So even if you take out that little tiny bar, you still got a lot of money. At least that's my feeling. And you might be able to quantify it a little further. Well, you need a lot of intraday data, but you also, I think you could also get a pretty good feel. And, and you're right. Um, Stock Trust ACP has a lot of intraday data. Um, I don't think you could download it, but you might be able to do a little empirical research. But I think, I think even with a daily chart, I don't think you're going to miss enough to where the trading is not worthwhile. Now, maybe 50%. Is, is too big of a number, okay? But it would be interesting to see, you, you ever get into these, and I'm gonna use the word flow day again, I guess that sounds bad, but sometimes I get into flow with these, I guess flow's not gonna like that. Uh, <laughs> neither will Marcy. Um, I have to edit that out. Someday, I gotta, it, he calls it flow. I don't know what other word to use. But sometimes you get into flow. Maybe that's what I need to say. Into flow, and um, it still doesn't sound right, does it? Anyway, uh, sometimes you get into flow, and these markets just keep going and going and going and going and going and going. Okay, and those are the best days ever. And you're just putting on trade after trade after trade after trade, and it feels like you're getting it a little late, but they just keep going and going and going. So I, I think there's something there. And I, I I don't think the opportunity costs are going to kill you, but I, I like I like that you are playing devil's advocate. So yeah, you know the the end of day data is going to give you a lot of a lot of information. And like I just said, you know, and, and again, in teaching this stuff, I back into a lot of concepts. And maybe, maybe all that's needed, I, I, I'm beginning to think, would be the daily charts. And if you really wanted to pick apart, yeah, get into the intraday stuff, get into the weeds. But I think just the daily charts are enough to give you a pretty good idea on whether or not you should be trading or should have traded on those days. Look at all those skull and crossbones at 50%. And I don't see where any one of those days you'd have made any money. And now if that range expanded from that, then you possibly made money. And and within that 50%, and let's say it expands, you you're going to get that fake out probably within that 50% and then get on the, on the other side of the market. And you it still might be less than 50%, but at least at least by by waiting for that range, especially to be more than like 27% or 30% or whatever, you're gonna miss a fake out or two. You can't miss all fake outs, that's life, okay? 
but you might miss a few of them. And I know that since I've been paying more attention to it, I seem to be missing more and more bad trades. 